All right, all right. So sometimes I get so raring to go that I forget the little things like plug in the microphone. <laughs> apologies, apologies. But here we are, and I will recap what I just said in case some other microphone wasn't picking it up. I'm Chance. Welcome to you. Welcome to the one within all. I'm here to talk about some personal revelations I have experienced about the nature of energy and free energy and what we're doing here <laughs> as human beings, as a tribe, and it's pretty exciting. So I couldn't really resist. I just needed to go on here even by myself if I had to just to talk about these things. And I'll say if you are joining the stream, whether live or later, it would be an awesome favor if you shared it uh, with anybody or everybody. That'd be awesome. And I thank you just for checking it out because we are here to fuel each other's expansion, literally. And that's what I'm mostly going to talk about right now. I will recap about the community experience uh, experiment experience that I have had going with a several friends and Pharaoh Tahar, also known as Daryl Garth. He may hop on with us later on, maybe not. Never know. I did give him the invite, and I'd love to hear his update. I'm sure we will get him on here again soon. The experiment, though, is a bona fide magical ceremonial practice that is very simple and requires no setup, no tools, no know-how, really. All it is is, well, magic is the uh, changing of consciousness or perception or reality, all the similar things, through the use of will. So... What this experiment actually is that we've been doing is to be spending money in a journal, imaginary money on paper that we grant ourselves every day, sort of playing pretend, if you will, and actually retraining our minds to expect abundance and experience abundance in a daily basis. Because what your, your brain lights up the same way, whether or not you're imagining something, dreaming it. Uh, telling somebody about it, recalling it, or experiencing it live. So this is a real thing. You're actually retraining your brain with this experiment. And what is also cool about it is we're doing it in sequence with the Fibonacci number set. So nature uses the Fibonacci sequence to grow things with optimal efficiency, minimum redundancy. And I think anything that we do using Fibonacci especially that's artistic and imaginative and creative, always winds up better. And I got this idea from some smart people who claim to have had real miracles occur because of doing this practice and witnessed other people have serious shifts in their current <laughs> in their currency. So what I'm going to talk about now is actually what is that current that we're actually trying to get more of, the actual abundance, the energy. It is, first of all, completely mental, and that's why... This experiment is so powerful, but <laughs> of course we do know that everything going on is mental at a level, whether or not you're a hardcore materialist or something beyond that, there is a mental component to everything, right? So we can agree with that. And it's a very funny thing that if I actually came over to your house tonight and told you I was going to give you a million dollars in the morning, but you would just have to go to bed tonight and sleep through the whole night without waking up and you have to be asleep in five minutes, you'd be like, ah, oh, shit, I can't get the million dollars. There's no way I can do that. <laughs> you'd be too stoked, right? And you have that mental energy, that expectation of abundance. We've been trained by a lot of new age stuff to discard expectations, but that's a half truth, okay? You actually should expect greatness. Why not? <laughs> Why expect anything less? Expect greatness and then recognize it when it comes even if it's not in the form that you thought it would be, even if it's in the form of a hard lesson that is you getting basically shown that something that you did expect to be great wasn't great or it didn't turn out even what you thought. Your expectations can be countered. Of course, there's surprise in life, but uh, your expectations are definitely something that can be a fuel as well. Back to talking about this experiment. Uh, and what, <laughs> what you can really do for yourself whenever you start shifting this, this current of uh, being in debt in your mind and being in debt in, to banks and all that, right? What, which came first, chicken or the egg? <laughs> well, I think when we came out of school, we were pretty much broke right away. That's what they told us. And that's uh, too bad, right? We actually are trained from very early age how to handle money by our, our, uh, our educators and parents. Wait, no, that doesn't happen. <laughs> They don't really tell us much about it other than you got to pay taxes and all that. Um, but you don't really get taught how to do it 
intelligently. So we spend all this time thinking we're broke. And so what do we do about it, right? What is our reaction? If we're someone that has the serious hustle in us or eventually develops it, we just start grinding. Like by the time we're in our 30s, we have become well oiled, I would say, <laughs> machines. <laughs> and we are doing our job like human robots so efficiently at that point that there's little time for anything else. And we're still barely making it through the rat race. So look how much it's done for us to become such perfect workers. We are still not in total abundance, some of us. And we learn in this process that it's not about the actual hardness of the work. It's actually <laughs> work is war. So get that, first of all. So you don't want to be at war in commerce, which is basically a, a form of warfare where we're trying to get something out of everybody else. You know, we should be funning, actually. We should be funning, not working. This is something I learned from Seven Bomar. I want to say that a good deal of even what I'm talking about today came to me as revelations from listening to some of his recent work. Seven Bomar does stuff at secretenergy.com. Amazing platform to check out. So much wisdom there and a, a real tribe to connect with that wants to pinpoint where you're at in your journey and help you through it and see the next step, right? So that's a word that is, of course, none of these words are owned by Seven Bomar. And in fact, I have thought this stuff through to a degree on my own that is far beyond what I watched in one person's video. So that aside, he's a great dude and I love the videos and I do recommend them. And funning, that's one word I'm going to take from him today. We should be funning, not working, because we have enthusiasm when we're having fun, right? And enthusiasm, there is a very important word. This is a key word. If you're taking notes, just write down enthusiasm and circle it because there's the answer. <laughs> there's, secret, there's the secret to energy. There's the free energy. I can elaborate further on that, but let's just say it suffice to know that we all know <laughs> that there's nothing getting done in our life if we don't care about it. Uh-oh. I'm out of, what's the word? I don't give a, I don't have any fucks for that, right? You're not even going to try. So <laughs> yeah, uh, I think that what we care about actually is pretty important. And what we care about, I just think about being in love. Like you go to the gym more when you're in love. Do you not? <laughs> There's a perfect example. So if you're in love with yourself, of course, you do these things as well. And there's part of the free energy equation is to love yourself. But we're, we're, we're at that stage where we know that's important. But we're still in these uh, bubbles of like our shells, right? We're still in those shells of wanting to just kind of interact through social media only and not in real life, wanting to just get through the grocery store as quickly as possible. And this relates to what I was saying before about getting to be such a well-oiled machine, such an efficient worker, worker, <laughs> wanker. No offense. I mean, I'm a wanker too. I'm still going to work, but uh <laughs> In that, in that process, we're like jealous with our time and we're, we're so jealous with our time. We can't even say what's up to the person right in front of us. Like that we, that's around us all the time, the people that are constantly around us. And a lot of us have experienced when we do come out of that shell, there's amazing synchronicity. Whoever's around you is usually there for a reason. And just not that you're in, you're in a crowded place. You need to talk to every person you pass, but just recognize what's in the person that you're looking at, which is also What's in you? And if that call is felt inside you that you should interact, don't be afraid of it. Because I'm telling you, my friends, that is it. That is the free energy right there. Because if you can get into a loop with the rest of humanity of I inspire you, you inspire me, then we feel updraft together. <laughs> We're both getting harmonized. We're both literally speeding up. We're both feeling stoked. It's really awesome. So let me check my notes here. I had a couple of specific points I wanted to make about this, but like back to being jealous and guarded with your time, thinking you don't have enough time that stresses you out, robs you of health and health is wealth. As we've said to a lot, a lot, a larger degree, we've said that the health is wealth in this series specifically. And then tying into that, you think you don't have time, so you don't sleep. And there you go. You're low on energy just from the feeling of not having enough time. So think about connecting with tribe uh, as much as possible as actually being your fuel source because 
This is as Savant has, Bomar has said, you're already in the spaceship, but you crash landed. And I'll say that the, uh, the computer records, the AI systems all got wrecked in that. And so you don't even have the records on how the fuel source works here. And you've, you know, just been kind of distracting yourself with all the entertainments that the onboard computer has while you try to figure out your spaceship. But you've got the fuel source now. It's literally our love and connection to one another. It's that easy. And if you can be in this state of legitimately being enthusiastic about your interaction with another person, the rest comes easy. You don't have to stress about like getting it right, the social cues or, or whatever it is that you might be thinking you're awkward about. Whatever, man. All of those thoughts are what are limiting you from being your true self. <laughs> so ditch the whole attitude of I have social anxiety. Don't even, do not say that to yourself anymore. That's literally putting a tax on yourself, a heavy price and a burden that you do not need. And you don't have to be like super outgoing to the point of putting yourself in situations you're not comfortable in. Actually just trust the intuition and, and know that whenever you might be seriously uncomfortable, there's a good reason for that potentially. But also know that if you're staying in a constant state of loving appreciation and real enthusiasm for your world and for the people in it, you're going to be attracting the exact same thing to yourself <laughs> constantly. And even if the person next to you isn't, coming at you that way when you give them permission to be completely enthusiastic and stoked about life instead of just like blah I'm at work I'm your hello I'm your cashier for today you know they're just kind of getting through it they're even being sort of nice you know but you can just be like blam you have the coolest earrings and something like that something you observe and what you what jumps out at you is going to actually be something that is special to them that they are happy that you're seeing their uniqueness in that moment and then they reflect that happiness back to you. They're like, oh, thank you. Cool. And then you're just like putting gas in the tank. It's a gas. Get serious about funning. Get serious about being enthusiastic. The balance between serious and Joker. That's the <laughs> Batman and the Joker. It's, you need both. It's not one or the other. So uh, get serious about the right things, which is about treating your fellow people right. So... Uh, I don't know if anyone's got any questions, but <laughs> if, there are, if they're there, it'd be cool. I'd love to take them while we're here. And thank you for the people tuning in and sharing. I, I feel like I've got most of that message out as I intended to, <laughs> uh, other than to say, as I, I mentioned earlier, you're already in your spaceship, but you crash landed and you lost all your records of how to repair the ship and how to get fuel specifically you lost energy and you fr and so it fried the computers or whatever you forgot how fuel worked fuel is the connection between you and your tribe and you fill up their spaceship they fill up your spaceship it goes back and forth it's harmony it's a great song and now that you found the fuel source of love which you already knew but like think about it here your enthusiasm is your energy and your energy is what helps you Draw in abundance. <laughs> Your energy is what helps you do the funding that's going to bring in the abundance, not the work. It shouldn't feel like work. We're having fun here. <laughs> that's, the, that's the key, okay? So now that you've got that and you've got the fuel, you can now simply repair the ship of your body as much as possible and refuel your sister, father, brother, and mother ships as soon as possible. Get them fueled up and <laughs> off the ground, <laughs> You know what I'm saying? So thank you guys. Uh, that's, I guess that's it for, for now, unless I do get some commentary. I, I don't want to keep you guys beyond the scope of this flow that I'm feeling. And I just wanted to get that out because when it's hit me over the last few days, oh, you know what? Yeah, I could go on. It, it always happens. I, I think I'm wrapping up, but there's more. I want to say about the community abundance experiment, what I've been spending my money on my uh, imaginary money, but <laughs> got my mind on my money, whatever. Uh, I actually had to take a couple days off from this because I got stuck on something. And it's so, it's so goofy because it's perfectly perfect example of what I'm talking about, this mind trap of work and uh, trying to be, I guess, like the perfect worker <laughs> and why you need to make sure take it to uh like thinking that taking care of others is somehow going to diminish your ability to take care of yourself it's so wrong so wrong thinking that saying 
that extra thing to the random person that you met at the store. I think you don't have time for that. It's going to cost you too much energy and therefore money. No, <laughs> you will be less energetic and less of a fulfilled soul because you didn't have the interaction that your spirit put you in line to have. Don't trip over it. Don't be like, oh man, I went through that whole experience and barely talked to anybody. That is also the anti-fuel. <laughs> Definitely stay on just the the awareness factor. Keep that tuned in and just relentlessly be on that level. And then the funding will be more automatic. And yeah, ditch the social anxiety concept totally. You don't need to describe yourself that way. It is uh, just an idea. <laughs> so the thing I got stuck on, though, was specifically that I, I knew that I wanted to spend this day 16, $987,000 on like, a, I guess, a tiny home community, which I, I knew that days ago, and I still never like took the time to come to the journal. And I just needed a little bit of time, I guess. Maybe it's the movement of certain planets that did shift today, but uh, in my favor, I might even add. But anyway, this idea that I could spend like my the first million dollars in this journal completely on some other group or person was like, I guess, freaking me out. I wasn't coming to terms with that. I was just getting stuck. And so what I did was do nothing for two days on the journal. And I eventually realized it's okay that I don't need anything out of this million dollars, that I don't really have an idea of how to spend it on me. And probably for the rest of this experience, it's going to be mostly spending it on things for other people. So I imagined creating this tiny home community where I hire some master builders to come in and help me learn for myself how to build really awesome dwellings out of some recycled materials for the cheap, cheap that are actually really efficient and well engineered because these things exist like earth ships and whatnot. And so I, in, in this journal experience, I bring them in and they help me build this whole park. And then as we go, it will basically just be continued to be funded by whatever abundance source that I am plugged into in this, uh, in this story. And as it goes, people will apply to live there pretty loose rules, but I would literally, my plan would be to let, even non-homeless people come and get a home there and just start the process of creating free dwellings that become so abundant and numerous that nobody can question whether or not it's really okay that we're just giving them away for free. Because at a certain, look, this thing with the Vatican, okay, at a certain level, <laughs> you have to realize the power that you really have. Because like, apparently a billion dollars was raised for the Vatican's bullshit Notre Dame fire, false flag that they did on purpose. Yeah, I mean, I can go on, on. I can go in on that if you need me to, but I think I already did with Bradley a couple nights ago when it happened. But that was done on purpose, and in hours they can raise a billion dollars for it. But yet there's all this starving in other countries where your fellow debt slaves have got it way worse, and you're just happy over here because where you live, dad only beats you three days a week instead of seven. I mean, give me a break. They're out right now. They're outlawing the use of free tax software. So I guess now you have to pay a middleman so that the middlemen with guns don't come and take you and put you in a cage or kill you for not paying them enough. So <laughs> I kind of lost it on that rant there for a minute. But uh, all just to say, like, in a very short amount of time, we could easily have built so many dwellings in our area with... <laughs> A million dollars? Can you imagine how many tiny homes could be constructed in one community there? You could deal with homelessness really quick and then in not very much time be bringing people in who want homes for free that don't want to live on this grid anymore. Bring them in and they can build their own dwelling and even if possible help fund it. We'll just, I mean, we'll figure that out. We can do it. So this is what I spent the million dollars on for day 16 in the Abundance Journal was this tiny home community for not just homeless starting out is for homeless, but then also just for anybody that doesn't want to pay to live somewhere because it should be free to live. I would say, and uh, I don't, I just don't buy that BS. I mean, belief system that we don't have the capability to just create so much abundance that we don't even need this currency bullshit because that's what it is. It is a lie. Your ancestors walked around and, and just ate food 
that they had all over the place because instead of having farms, everything was a farm, guys. <laughs> this is what the earth is. It's one big permaculture experiment, but we're supposed to be the gardeners. And it's not supposed to be divided up into land patches. We're supposed to pay attention to it as a whole and work together. And then the abundance will just be so unreal. Who needs the money? You can't eat money. How many middlemen do you need? I mean, you get the paycheck from the, the job. So right there, there's like two steps. You got to go to work and then you got to get the paycheck, which you got to wait on. And then you got to take that to the bank and then you got to go to a grocery store or to a restaurant and then you got to cook the food if you bring it home. So it's like, how many steps is that and middlemen between you and eating your own energy, <laughs> which is what it's all about. So that's the real free energy is uh, that reflecting and love with others that gives you the enthusiasm to do whatever it is you do fearlessly and recklessly. And just because you know it's the right damn thing to do. And you've got it. You guys have all got it. And I love all of you that I've seen hop on and watch me go at it. <laughs> I would love to catch any questions or uh, comments here in the chat before I go. I do think more or less I covered it there. So <laughs> unless I get going again, <laughs> it's been awesome talking to you all. And I really appreciate the fact that you, uh, you know, respect yourself to real enough to realize that there actually is such a thing as free personal energy and that you're ready to tap into it. I mean, you're here holding space with me for it. So thank you everybody. <laughs> and do check out the extremely awesome speaker, Seven Bomar from secret energy, because a good chunk of what I just spit at you was actually inspired by things I heard from him, various things, and then expanded on by myself to realize Oh, yeah, the spaceship. Yeah, I'm in a spaceship. Okay. <laughs> and I've got the fuel, and I'm ready to go. And you guys are ready, too. It's time. We're breaking the matrix. And, yeah, go check it out. Um, some of the other live streams we've done on this abundance experiment if you want further fuel, because that's what I'm here to do. I'm here to fuel you, and then you guys fuel me back. <laughs> Clint's got a question here. Do you think just giving things away to people can actually cause them to be weaker? Well, that is one f argument, but I will say, Clint, that not this isn't judgment of you. I, I respect this argument, but it is a, a fear-based argument, to be fair, because you're saying it could go wrong. Yeah, where's the balance? Well, you know, in this imaginary experiment, it might not be the greatest thing to do to, uh, I guess, provide completely free homes, but I don't see why if we have infinite resources that we can't set it up so that we all have the knowledge to turn all the trash all around us into homes because it'd be easy. And the balance is in, we all have to be in the crown chakra together. We all have to be in our sovereignty together. What that actually means is not that you're an individual, I'm an individual, I get to do what I want at the expense of you. It actually means we're on the same team, we're playing football, and there's a coach up in the uh, top of the stands that's got a walkie-talkie, and he's telling you the plays in your ear, and we're all on the same play, because we're all on the same field, and we're here to be funning. We're not here to be war, working at war with each other in commerce. So ultimately, any mindset that has got at its root like a question of fear, saying that, we cannot just provide for basic needs for humanity. Well, in the current system we've got, things are definitely going to come to a halt whenever everyone wakes up to this fact. Many things will come to a halt. But are they things that we need? All right, we need to go back. <laughs> We're going back to the future where the ancestors actually have always been. This type of mindset, connection. We're here to repair. We're the bridge. I, <laughs> I could say more. But uh, there's no... It is not correct that there's a price tag on life. That is a human convention. It was created and it did not exist at a certain point. And we can break free of that anytime we want. And we must know that the key is that we have to build something different. We cannot fight the power. <laughs> That's what it wants. It gives you all the tools you need to fight it. But um, okay, that's the antimatter or anti-fuel, whatever. That's the, the gravity, if you will. <laughs> And yeah, archaic revival is, is definitely the way to go. But we've got all this cool tech, man. We can actually find a balance to that, too. We don't, we're here to bring new things to the scene <laughs> with our imagination. So the key is to actually realize the whole ecosystem is a single organism and you're it. <laughs> and so what's messing up the waterways is, for you, is the same as like uh, the bad water you may be drinking, for example. 
uh, that's just you know one way that this fractal is a big mirror. It's all a big mirror. I appreciate the comments from everybody. Thank you, Sarah and Clint. This is awesome, and it was cool talking with you guys. Uh, I actually do now need to get going. I got some of my own <laughs> funning to do. It's more podcast funning, but on the editing side, I've got a really cool episode coming up this week with a wonderful friend of mine who's a tattoo artist named Sarah Josephine, who also does a type of Reiki called soul painting. And woo, it's awesome. Gets into color healing and connecting to your intuition in a very easy way using your creativity and unblocking all the blocks. So get your free energy. Make sure to uh, share this video for me. I mean, I got nobody but you. Hopefully I can give you some fuel and in exchange, you can give me some fuel to get to more people so that we can get this, get the mothership back online. <laughs> All right. Love you guys. And remember uh, that you're awesome and you can do everything that is right, but to don't put the pressure on yourself that it's all got to be right now. That's the thing that I've learned most in this experience. It's not right now unless, uh, unless you let it be. So if you think that you've failed in some way to achieve what you needed to in the now, you are literally sapping yourself of the will that you need to stay energized right now. It's kind of uh, simple whenever you realize it. So yeah, don't let that pressure of time actually be the scythe that cuts your field down while it starts to grow. <laughs> That's what it means. Time is actually not anything other than what you make of it. All right. Bye-bye.